everyone, welcome back to another cooking video. Today we're going to be making the Guggenheim in New York City out of Rice Krispie Treats. This is very exciting because it is such a beautiful building and landmark in New York. We have to start out by actually making and chilling the Rice Krispie Treats so they're workable. Our friend Sophie might be helping us too so you'll see her as well. See you when we're done! We chose this building because of its beauty and simplicity, making it ideal for Rice Krispie Treats. Exactly! The Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum was designed by architect Frank Lloyd Wright and is a quintessential example of his organic, flowing style. He actually coined the term organic architecture, a philosophy that promotes harmony with nature and some of its tenets, proposed in the Gaia Charter by architect David Pearson, include to be inspired by nature and be sustainable, healthy, conserving, and diverse, follow the flows and be flexible and adaptable, and satisfy social, physical, and spiritual needs. The museum opened on October 21st, 1959, and is known as a Temple of Spirit, where radical art and architecture meet. While we're preparing, let's discuss some history. In 1943, Frank Lloyd Wright was commissioned to design a permanent museum to house the Museum of Non-Objective Painting, Solomon Guggenheim's personal collection. Over the next 16 years, Wright made about 700 sketches and six separate sets of working drawings for the building. Construction was delayed for many years and various reasons, and what's really sad is that Frank Lloyd Wright died in April of 1959, just six months before the opening of the museum. That is sad, but despite this, the building captured the attention of the public from the moment it was completed. Okay, so now that we've finished the Rice Krispie Treats, we're going to start construction! The building was a very organic shape, which is a welcome contrast to the grid of New York City. It was intended to look like an upside-down ziggurat, which are the temples of ancient Mesopotamia, and it also recalls the Roman pantheon, not only through its round design, but also through its materials. Oh right, they both used concrete. And not only that, but they both used it in revolutionary ways. The Romans discovered poured concrete, which helped them build tons of stuff, and instead of just using poured blocks of concrete, Wright built on this idea and used lots of metal rebar inside the structure to help hold it up and give the exterior that sweeping, unbroken quality. Yeah, the contractor for the project had actually built ramped parking garages in the past, so not only does the building recall the incredible architecture of ancient Rome and Mesopotamia, but also parking garages. And you're right. And speaking of ramps, let's talk about the striking interior of this building. Yes, there is one continuous floor that spirals upward and hugs the outer wall, leaving a bright atrium in the center. A large glass dome allows for plenty of natural sunlight, and this atrium space makes it so that when you're inside, everywhere you look, you are surrounded by art, and no walls block you from art on the other side. Right, and the building itself is such a work of art that when it opened, artists were afraid that the architecture would overshadow their work. Artists also debated its design, arguing whether it was the most beautiful building in America or less a museum than it is a monument to Frank Lloyd Wright. Well, no matter where you stand, it's obvious that this building had a huge impact on the world. In the words of art critic Paul Goldberger, Wright's building made it socially and culturally acceptable for an architect to design a highly expressive, intensely personal museum. In this sense, almost every museum of our time is a child of the Guggenheim. All I do is say, sigh, yeah. 